Generally, after middle age, because people think their eyelids are sagging, they have upper blepharoplasty, which resects the skin on the eyelid. However, surprisingly, it's very rare to have sagging eyelids after middle age. Since the eyebrow and eye are so close together, how much can the skin sag? Therefore, actual sagging and stretching of the eyelids are insignificant. On the contrary, sagging of the forehead, skin, and eyebrows are what makes the eyelids seem sagged to our eyes. Despite the fact that forehead and eyebrow are sagging, having upper blepharoplasty, in other words, removing the skin on the eyelids after middle age, will make the person's image too fierce and unnatural, and it has the tendency of making the wrinkles on the outer and inner eyes worse. Therefore, after middle age, if eyebrows seem to be sagging, then avoid eye surgery and instead move the sagging eyebrows and forehead skin to their original positions in order to create natural looking eyes. Directly transforming the eyes will change the person's image. After middle age, facial image should look better rather than changed. Therefore, instead of directly changing the eyes, induce indirect transformation. As I mentioned just now, when eyebrows and the forehead skin lift up, slightly hidden double eyelid lines will be exposed and the wrinkles around the eyes and on the nasal bridge will be improved. To observe this on both sides, once the eyebrows and forehead lift up, sagging skin on the eyelids change back to the shape it was during youth. However, because of decreased fat on the eyelids from aging, having forehead brow lift exposes the hollow eyelids. Absence of fat on the eyes makes the eyes feel extremely tired in the afternoon. Therefore, in many cases, upper lid fat injection is performed simultaneously with forehead brow lift. Also, principle of forehead brow lift isn't about simply pulling things up. Instead, it's about naturally and physiologically lifting up the eyebrows by weakening the muscles that pull down the eyebrows and that form the glabellar wrinkles by cutting them. This is the core point of this surgery. In other words, please remember that this surgery is not about forcefully lifting up the forehead and brows. Now, I will show you how the actual surgery is carried out. For the surgery, it's necessary to separate forehead from temple areas. Looking from the exterior eyebrows, slightly protruded bones show, and this is the forehead. Then, the area below this line and above the zygoma is the temporal area. Surgical method varies according to the sagging form of the eyebrows. Generally, one centimeter incision is made at the center and on the hairy area above the highest point on the eyebrows. About one centimeter incision is made in this hairy area and likewise one centimeter incision is made on the other side. Forehead is dissected during surgery and generally dissection up to the area about 2 cm above the eyebrow bones is performed without watching the endoscope. From this point on, endoscope is used to avoid destroying nerves. Viewing through the endoscope shows the inside like shown in the picture here. Then from here on, endoscope is used to dissect up to the eyebrow bone. Here and on this area, we can see the nerves moving up like this. 
This nerve must not be damaged during surgery. Likewise, nerve is moving up on this area. Like I mentioned before, this surgery is not about forcefully lifting up the eyebrows. Instead, it's about physiologically and naturally lifting the eyebrows. Muscles that form the glabellar wrinkles are positioned here. And underneath, there are several other muscles, including the muscle coming up from the nose. So about four of the muscles lift down the eyebrows. And two of them not only lift down the eyebrows, but forms the glabellar wrinkles. On the exterior where the eyebrows sag excessively is the orbicular muscle which circles the eyes. And this muscle must be cut in order to weaken its strength. This equipment you're looking at now is the endoscope. Through small incision, this endoscope part will enter under the skin. Once it's inserted, structures under the skin are exposed on the monitor through this cable. Currently, you're looking at the structures of my hand. Structures of this hand shows up on the screen like the following. Likewise, endoscope can enlarge the anatomical structures under the skin. Then, surgery can be performed accurately. Also, it allows precise resection of the muscles that need to be cut off while protecting the nerves and blood vessels. I would like to emphasize again that eyebrows will lift up naturally through this procedure which uses endoscope to cut the muscles that pull down the eyebrows and form glabellar wrinkles. Thank you.